welcome back to my channel if you're new to my channel welcome my name is Jane and I'm currently based here in the UK and I'm also an aspiring UK RN so today I'd like to share my experience um, on my UK RN journey and I'd like to help you answer the question uh, if you have a work gap or if you don't have um, hospital or bedside experience can you get an employer here in the UK so I'll lay down all my milestones in nursing and my experience and I'll give you a brief overview on what I did to reach where I am right now so uh, just to give you a heads up right now I'm currently um, hired in one of the care homes here in the UK and uh, I'm hired under pre-registered nurse to registered nurse so they'll be supporting me for my OSCE and all that and hopefully by tomorrow eto na, if I file na yung visa ko, I am switching from a tier 4 general student visa to um, skilled worker visa and I'll uh, let you know more about it once I start working if you want to know um, what's happening after you get an employer in a care home anyway uh, without further ado I'll give you um, background of my professional career and my work experience in a nutshell, I graduated December 2007, Bachelors of Science in Nursing in a state university in Manila. And then I took the local board exam December 2007 of the same year. And then I registered to PRC uh, April 2008. Okay, and fast forward after a lot of pending applications and volunteer applications walang nangyari uh, I took IVT um, in Martinez Hospital March 2009 and then uh, July 2009 I took ACLS and BLS in PGH not only that I also took my and CLEX are in examination, which I passed. After a few months, I got a call from Hospital ng Manila Medical Center and I got a slot for um, a one month rotation volunteer. So that's my first bedside experience, one month. All right, and after that, I worked part time in BBO and I decided to continue working in the PPO industry since it's been almost what, two years and I did not get any paid uh, jobs so I na to uh, <laughs> pa <palamunin>. be <laughs> okay and uh, after that I did get another slot uh, around April of 2010 so I tried na pagsabayen yung volunteer experience ko and my BPO work, which worked naman, but it was quite hard. Uh, yon. And then after that one month rotation in hospital ng Sampaloc, which is just a 50 bed capacity hospital, nagtulituin na ako into a call center. So in my BPO career, I've been to two call centers. And I lasted uh, until 2014. So March 2014, I resigned and I decided I want to apply uh, for any job that uh, can take me outside Philippines. So I applied full-time as a flight attendant, as in full-time. The whole day, nagahanap ng openings and uh, check sa mga kakilala, ganun. So, March, April, April, May, after two months, I got um, shortlisted for the interview and I also passed. So, I got hired as a cabin attendant in Mascat, Oman. And by September of the same year, 2014, I was deployed in Mascat as a cabin attendant. 
So, ang daming nangyari. I've been enjoying the life of a cabin crew and its perks and benefits. And I can say it's a privilege and it's one of those best moments in my career. Right? But of course, it will not last long, especially when pandemic hit, guys. Alam niyo yun, na natigil ang mundo. Walang lumipad, walang gusto mag-travel, and I did not lose my job. However, it made me think further and find a more stable job. Kasi syempre, mga bata pa. Hindi tayo bumabata. Hindi <laughs> tayo bumabata. <laughs> gusto ko pa sabihin sa atin na bumabata ako, di ba? <laughs> Alright. So, Moving forward, um, pandemic hit, and uh, I just um, processed my license in the U.S. Nilipat ko from California to Illinois, 2019. But then again, after that, um, I thought of um, going in the U.K. Uh, on a student visa. So um, right now. It's uh, September. My student visa here is expiring. It definitely worked out for me. If you want to know more how I did my student visa, I did it DIY. If you want to know the cost and what are the things that you need to consider or process, just comment down on the uh, comment box below. Let me know and maybe I can set aside another um, video for that concern. So. Nag IELTS ako. Um, I started processing, by the way, my student visa February 11 of 2020. Kasagsagan ng pandemic, nagsisimula na siya. And I took my IELTS exam July 2020. Once I confirmed na pwede ako mag-enroll, I immediately took the IELTS exam na available. And after that, I filed for my student visa. And October 28, I left Muscat, Oman, and started my UK journey. So after that, uh, daming months, ten months of coursework. Ang ginawa ko. We had face-to-face um, -face classes alternating with online classes but during the lockdown all throughout for online and on grades namin is uh, just based on the grades were just based on our coursework essays 2,000 word essay mahina per uh, module or let's say per topic ng, ano namin, ng subjects so, if you want to know about my course, what course I got, where I studied, or um, how's the experience of studying in the UK and its costs, um, just comment down below as well and uh, I'll try to find some time to make a video for you. Alright. So, ngayon, natapos ko na yung course ko. I'm switching to skilled worker visa like what I said um, my NMC journey started just around February of this year February 2021 then lang ako nag uh, open ng NMC online account ko and um, I submitted my documents luckily my IELTS from 2020 na ginamit ko sa student visa ko um, is good for my NMC application. So, shout out to 9.09ers for um, guiding me and helping me pass my IELTS in one go. And I'm happy that I'll be able to use it in my skilled worker application aside from my student visa applications. Like two birds in one stone. Diba? Alright. So, Hindi pa ako ready mag-exam until July 2021. <laughs> okay, July 2021. I booked my um, CBT May 19 because I know that I have to take it before August 2 or else magbabago na yung um, 
set up and I need time to find a job after um, passing my exam. Hindi ako makapag-exam until matapos yung course ko because I had a lot of coursework. I didn't have time to study on the side or review. So I waited for July 2, matapos yung course ko. And then I had a total of around 40 days because maagang natapos yung course. And uh, I studied for 40 straight days. Do it yourself, self study on my own. Laban na yon. <laughs> I, I got um, a lot of help from other uh, UKRN aspirees and other UKRNs. Na. Got some links, I research, I got um, help from agencies and their resources because I also tried um, applying in agencies here in the UK. I submitted my CV. I submitted um, CVs in Philippines as well. As in, kapit sa patalib, guys. Lahat ginawa ko. I applied um, through Indeed. I applied through the NHS uh, portal, Track Jobs, and read.co.uk uh, Ano pa ba? Pati LinkedIn, pinapatulan ko, guys. And, alam ko, parang may isa pa akong nakalimutan na site. Um, I'll just insert the name of the app. But, if you're interested, yun nga, the usual monster.co.uk or something. Yun, yung mga other popular uh, job websites here in the UK. Inapply ko lahat yun. I posted my CV there. But to be honest, guys, until you haven't gotten your IELTS and your CBT, malabo na makakuha ka ng employer. May experience ka man o wala. Nandito ka man sa UK or if you're in the Philippines or somewhere else. So, if you're really serious in being a UKRN someday, work on your IELTS or OET and CBT and then keep on applying. Alright. When it comes to my uh, experience, after I passed the CBT, I applied in uh, more hospitals and uh, other care homes and even hospice. So, Luckily, um, the best offer that I got and um, the best opportunity that I got is for a care home. So, I got a job offer on the same day of my interview last August 2, 2021. So, this, this year, just last month. And uh, since then, I've been processing my requirements, documents. Dinalay ko pa ng 10 days kasi may opportunity si NHS malapit dito. And nangarap pa ako na mag-NHS. However, guys, there's a possibility for my NHS. However, ang visa ko hindi na kayang mag-antay. So, gora tayo kay Care Home. And, alam mo yun, um, if it's for you, for it's for you. So... NHS will always be there. Um, I'll just go with the care home for now. Pero possible, possible kahit two months volunteer experience ako with a huge work gap. Uh, even yung volunteer experience ko was 2009, 2010. So that's like 10 to 11 years work gap. Nakahanap pa ko ng employer. And I think uh, it's not necessarily that I'm here in the UK. Kaya ako nakakuha ng trabaho. Because I believe this. Um, care home that I will be working with, or I, I am working with, hindi pa ako start um, they're also hiring directly from Philippines, and alam mo yun, um, I've even heard that some people were in the BPO industry for some time, and they got a job as long as they got the CBT and the IELTS so, I suggest don't fret tuloy nyo yung CBT nyo and the IELTS nyo, and once um, you're done, go and apply. Yung agencies sa Pilipinas, they're picky and choosy to, um, in endorsing people. And I can say na baka malabo 
slim ang chance kung mag hospital kayo. However, if you will be going with a care home, may chance. Kahit uh, may work gap and wala kayong experience masyado in nursing. So, UKRN dream is still on its way, di ba? So, my post is a pre-registered nurse going to a registered nurse in one of the care homes here in Reading, UK. Alright guys, thank you so much and I hope that my story inspired you and you get some points or ideas on the strategy that you'll be doing to reach your UKRN goal. And it will help you um, determine which route will work for you if you want to return to nursing or if probably if you'll you're planning to study in the UK related to nursing or not even related to nursing pero gusto nyo mag DIY probably I can give you a heads up sa mga pinagdaanan ko alright so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and comment down below if you like this kind of videos and I'll see you soon next time bye